Good morning, folks. We've got just about an entire show between the Earth and Sun today, but we will dive into a key climate-forcing process with it. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com and find no sunspots on the Earth-facing half, coronal holes north and south, but also top right departing on the north. You could see it in the opening yellow shots, and again here in red, ionized helium shining in 304 angstroms of light. Very nice filament sheet display. The solar wind is quiet. We covered the cosmic ray error spike yesterday, and everything is calm geomagnetically. Let's go to the links. Folks, this is Mount Michael in the South Atlantic. Nobody goes there. But I bet volcano tourism crops up now that only the seventh known lava lake on Earth was found to exist at the summit crater. FYI, it is a British island, housing no more than 50 people in summertime, and most leave for the winter because they're about a seven iron from Antarctica. We've got a paper that you can't read because it's behind a paywall, but it bolsters the concept of geomagnetic geology, conductivity, resistivity, chemistry, ground magnetism. It was traceable in the fire patterns in 1921 in New York, triggered by the solar storm, just like they track the disruptions today, albeit from much less dramatic storms. Wouldn't want to see another one like 1921 anytime soon. This is the Milky Way, or so they think, it's an artist conception because we are inside it and obviously can't get out and look back right now. We are thought to be a fairly spiraled galaxy, but nothing like NGC 2985. This is not an artist conception, but Hubble's real shot of the galaxy, which appears to be wound so tightly upon itself, it's difficult to tell where they began and where those arms end. And folks, no UV here, no infrared here, just visible light. Well, that's about the only thing we're going to do outside of the Earth and Sun, and so now we come to our top story, and it does require proper treatment. Ionospheric irregularities in the wake of a solar storm should be homogeneous, relatively, based on latitude and magnetic conjugate point. But it turns out that wasn't the case here. The Asian and American ionospheric regions behaved completely differently at the bottom layer of the ionosphere, and their explanation is that one side of the planet had a different lower atmospheric forcing from the solar storm than the other. This is easily the most important and basic principle a solar terrestrial physicist can convey to the world. Irradiance, even from solar flares, induces currents around the world through the atmosphere, and this is also at the global scale during CME impact and induced current in the crust and the atmosphere. But on the side taking the impact, there are particles from the solar wind and the compressed Van Allen belts injected downward into the ionosphere and even upper atmosphere. This is where mainstream science could not fail any harder. In focusing only on solar irradiance, which takes a long time to have appreciable top-down effects, the energetic particles caught in L-shell magnetic fields or that reach the ionosphere or below are destined for the global electric circuit and geomagnetic system. Simply put, the electric circuit runs down towards the ground in fair weather, high pressure, the sunnier the better. This current returns up to the sky in low pressure cells and in major lightning events like sprites and terrestrial gamma flashes. It's not just the current, but the wind as well. With the wind, the current descends and spreads at various boundary layers, including the ground, sucks into and concentrates in the regions known for having the most energetic weather. And by the way, all that air screaming towards the center of the low forms a column as you ascend back up through the atmosphere. And while the wind generally redistributes back out of the column here at the jet stream, the energetic particles indeed often get all the way back up to affect the bottom part of the ionosphere, where an extra boost from solar impact could cause opposite reactions on opposite sides of the globe. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.